The first scripture reading in unison is Matthew 5, verses 13 to 20. Let us begin. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have, not, I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of the Lord. Invite the children down front. Hello. How are you, Owen? Owen and Sam and Isa and Scarlett and Violet and Jack and Sophia and Joshua and Benjamin and Jeremiah and Teresa. Yes, Pastor Robin. Everybody grab a seat. Did everybody hear their name? Yeah. Cool, cool. <laughs> so, what is this? A candle. A candle. All right, so I am going to light this candle. Don't set the church on fire. Okay, I will try not to. Good. Somebody in your house is teaching you to be really, really careful, right? Yeah. No? No? <laughs> Yeah, that's, yep. Always good to have an adult, right? To do that. We've got to learn how to do that. All right, so um, what's going to happen if I put a lid on it? Isa, why will it go out? It, will, it, needs, it needs air, right? And if not, it'll suffocate and go out, right? Boom. Gone, right? Do we take a deep breath? Do we need air no. to breathe, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Finally, I am Pastor Robin. All right. So I want to talk about breath. <sighs> okay. So we read in, and there's um, two big sections of the Bible. There's the Old Testament and the New Testament, right? Yeah. You know that? Okay. In the New Testament, we read about uh, Jesus and the followers of Jesus. The original language that it was written in is, anybody? Did you hear an, I heard an adult whisper it. Okay, if you know what it is, I'll give you a Snickers bar. What? What, what is the original language that the New Testament is written in? There's no way you know it. Good, because I don't... French, okay. Good guess. Greek. Greek. Greek looks like that. This is... This I could actually read to you. This is... Yeah. Yeah. It, there's, it's all Greek to me. That's an expression, right? For folks who don't know Greek. Okay. The Old Testament was written in... All right. I'll show you, I'll show you the... I'll show you the language. Would, would, Chinese. Not Chinese. 
not Japanese. Looks like it's not language. Turkish. Turkish. Hebrew, right? Hebrew. And it actually, you read from the back to the front, right? Now, I could not read this to you. Um, I loved, I had to study this in seminary. I loved Greek. I did not love Hebrew. And I, but I do want to say I got an A. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then um, I read what other people write about it because, um, yeah, it's really challenging. So I'm going to tell you a little something about the language. The original texts of, of the Old Testament, you see all those little dots around the little, you see there's, those are the vowels, right? Right, ah, e, i, o, u, right? Those are the vowels. The original text didn't have any, they call them vowel points, they didn't. So we have to, so people who really know Hebrew well kind of guess what, what the words are and they added the vowels later to make it easier for people like me to, to study it. Now there's one word in the Bible this is a long route to get here. There's one word in the Bible where Moses asks God, what is your name? And we have in uh, the name that is given to, uh, to Moses, which means I am who I am, or I will be who I will be, right? It is, you know, but we're not exactly sure how it's pronounced, right? We, it could be pronounced Yahweh, it could be pronounced Jehovah. It could be pronounced a different way, all because we don't have the vowels, so we're guessing at what the vowels are, right? Now, this is a really long road to get here. I have heard that a really, a, one way of pronouncing the name of God is that it's the sound of your breath. Ready? <sighs> right? And I really love the idea that every time that we're breathing, let's do it again, we're calling on the name of God. And I have noticed that when I'm really nervous or when I'm stressed out or when I um, am, you know, I'm afraid, I, I find myself going, have you ever noticed that? Like, and I realize now, like, I'm, it's, it's a little prayer, like, God help, like, oh, Lord, be with me, right? So I want you to think, when you catch yourself taking that deep breath, that you're really praying, that you're calling on the name of God. Yes, Jack? Should I do a deep breath? Say that again? If you take too many deep breaths, will you suffocate? You will not suffocate if you take too many deep breaths. You might hyperventilate, but we're not going to go there. Okay. So can we fold our hands, close our eyes, bow our heads, and let's all take a deep breath. Lord, thank you for always being with us. Thank you that when we call out to you, you hear and you answer our prayers. Thank you for the reminder that with each breath, you are with us. In Jesus' name, amen. So. Let us listen for the word of God. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast but you do not see? Why humble yourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is this not the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? 
Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the, the yoke from among you, the pointing of finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then, you, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When I was a young person, I I believed in God, but I hesitated to commit myself to being a follower of Jesus Christ because I was afraid that I was going to lose myself. I was afraid of becoming the Stepford Wives of Christians. Plain, bland, melba toast. Like I had to exercise my personality in, in order to conform to God's will. I didn't understand for a long time that giving oneself over to God means becoming more fully who you are. Not losing yourself but finding yourself and who God created you to be. Not becoming like a cookie-cutter Christian, but one who has particular gifts. And I continue to figure out what those are. I think that's part of the joy of, of this path that we're on, is that we are continually growing and learning about God and about ourselves. God created me with a love for creativity. I didn't figure that out till age 30, that I am... Uh, not joyful unless I, there's some creative pursuit going on in my life. God gave me a sense of humor, and I am most alive when I am laughing. God gave me a childlike faith that believes deeply, and, uh, and I am most fulfilled when I am encouraging other people in their faith. God has given you gifts and a personality that is uniquely you. I chose the image for this morning of the, of the winding rivers that lead to the ocean because I read about a drop of water that was part of a, a great river that did not want to meet the sea but because she was afraid of losing herself, only to discover that when she met the ocean, she would become the ocean, mighty and powerful. When we become who God created us to be, we are mighty and powerful, even as we may be gentle and soft-spoken. But there's a depth to a person who is living with their source and from their source, living out of that space. The world notices when we are living into and out of who God created us to be. We heard last week the beginning of the Sermon of, of on the mount and Jesus blessing everyone. You are blessed when you know your need for God. Blessed are the poor in spirit and blessed are, blessed are, blessed are. And then Jesus continues, you are the salt of the earth, you are light, let your light shine. Again, this is description, not prescription. You are already salt, you are already light. What does that mean? What does it mean to be salt and light? Salt brings out the flavor in a dish. It enhances the flavor of what it's with. Salt does not lose its saltiness. Uh, it, how, it can, however, become diluted to the point where you don't taste it. And I wonder if it isn't a caution uh, to become so agreeable to the world's values that we forget who and whose we are. One of the many reasons that Jesus calls us into community is that it's way too easy to get caught up. 
And we never just put one grain of salt on something. Salt is more effective when you are with other grains of salt. I actually thought about doing that with the kids, just, you know, pouring out salt and just trying to get one grain of salt. Right? It's always uh, a more salt uh, or as a group of salt, a pinch of salt that where, we, where the flavor comes out as we are called together. In the same way, light. Even a little bit of light, say a single candle, can light up a room. It can even let light up a landscape. A candle is visible, one candle is visible for more than a mile away, 1.6 miles exactly. But how much more powerful when we stand together and hold our candles. That's one of our uh, rituals of the church every year at Christmas time is to sing Silent Night. And it's the lights, it's the faces that are lighted up all together that, that sit with us, that make us, that fill us with joy. I could sit in the sanctuary by myself with a single candle, and it would be lovely and it would be beautiful, but it would also be lonely. Salt is for saltiness. Its identity and purpose are virtually one and the same. Likewise, light is for shining. <laughs> I, it's a, the whole idea of salt not being salty. Just as no one would use unsalty salt, no one would light a lamp and then hide it out of sight. Who you are and what you're meant to do are one and the same. You are the spice in our dish. Your light helps to brighten our path together. And again, Jesus is not commanding, he's naming. You are salt, you are light. God made you, blessing you with gifts to bless the world. But we do have to claim and embrace those gifts. Live them out. We do have to be salty, which in today's world has a different connotation, and luminous. We do have to fulfill and embody what the gifts, our gifts that God has given us. We have to be who we are. The foundation of all of that is blessing. And then after Jesus blesses, he encourages all of us to be who we were created to be. I read it paraphrased this way. You are salt and light. God made you to bless the world. You may feel small and insignificant, but like a pinch of salt or a spark of light, you can make a tremendous difference. Go boldly then and be who you are. For heaven's sake, don't hide your light. Go and shine for all to see. Isn't that beautiful? Today we celebrate the leadership gifts of members of this body whom the Spirit is calling to let their lights shine. A little later in the service we will be installing and ordaining officers of the church. But each of us has been given gifts and talents that are unique to us. We just have to figure out what they are and use them. Again, I could not have told you what my gifts were when I was a teenager. It took, again, it took me to age 30 to figure out that you know, I'm not happy if I'm not getting to be creative. And now I realize that the church is in desperate need for creatives, and I think for such a time as this. Children of God, young and old, each of us has been given gifts to use to the glory of God. They may not be big and flashy, but small and gentle. But God knew what God was doing when God made you. You are a gift to the world. Be who you are through the power of the Holy Spirit. Learn your gifts. Live into them. And when you're doing that, you will light up the world with your joy. In Jesus' name, amen.